Ohio's number one news. ABC 7 Eyewitness News Sunday morning starts right now. And we start with breaking news, stunning images coming out of the riots that happened in Chicago last night. Protesters setting cars and buildings on fire, businesses looted. It started as a peaceful protest against the death of an unarmed black man in Minneapolis. But as the night went on, things became violent. Good morning, I'm Mark Rivera. And I'm Karen Jordan in for Stacey Baca. We have team coverage of last night's riots and the cleanup efforts this morning. We start with Jesse Kirsch, who is live on State Street in the Loop. Jesse. Karen, this is Macy's. This is what's left of Macy's storefront. Crews just finished smashing out what was left of this shattered window in place, and you can see there's now glass across the sidewalk here. I want to walk you a little bit down the street here. We're on the Randolph side of the Marshall Field building, and look inside. There's now a team inside of Macy's, and the crew, our camera is going to zoom in now and show you inside the store. You can see the merchandise that is still here is scattered all over the floor. It looks as if a hurricane swept through here, and this is just one of the scenes of cleanup this morning after a very violent night in downtown Chicago. Take a look at these images. They are shocking to say the least. Vehicles on fire being flipped over by these crowds, clashes between these protesters and police. You mentioned this started as a peaceful protest after the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Can groups of these protesters then turned violent with police, and there is derogatory language uh, embl emblematic of graffiti on, on various buildings downtown now toward police. That was just a portion of what happened last night. There was looting, merchandise stolen from various stores, and one business owner watched his livelihood be destroyed by these groups. We heard a loud bang. Somebody threw a big stone through this window here. And then once the window broke, everybody just started to funnel in. They started jumping over the counters. They started taking the cigarettes. They started taking the alcohol. Anything they could get their hands on, they just came. Hundreds and hundreds of people just kept coming, just taking things out of the store. And that's the scene that we're seeing all over downtown Chicago. And we want to bring you back here live now and show you a pair of shoes sitting in this storefront and from what I can tell looking at them they're unlaced they look like they're brand new shoes that might have just fallen out of a box as someone was trying to grab them out of the store and again you can hear the glass falling as crews continue to work on this Macy storefront again this is just one of the businesses badly beat up now that the curfew has lifted here we are seeing more activity downtown in fact there are a good number of cars driving through Randolph Street right now some people are stopping taking in these sites taking photos because this was certainly a historic and truly sad night in Chicago. Karen, back to you. Jesse, thank you. Let's head right out to Michelle Gallardo, who is taking a look at the damage that happened in River North. Michelle. Karen, that's right. We are just north of the river, and I can tell you that what we're looking at here is really just the snapshot of what we can see everywhere, not just along River North, but the Gold Coast, also along Michigan Avenue, where really there's still a very large police presence this morning as the stores begin their cleanup from what was a very destructive night. Now, here where we are, the CVS Pharmacy, you can see, was completely trashed overnight. The windows were shattered. The store was looted. It was still being looted early this morning. The people that you can see here cleaning up include the cleaning crew, yes, but also just people from the neighborhood who are simply devastated at what happened here last night. I've had people walk up to me in tears, and really, it is not just the CVS. You can see, really, the entire street is littered with garbage. There is graffiti everywhere. Certainly, most, if not all, of the buildings have sustained some sort of damage, be it graffiti, gr broken windows, you name it. And of course, this all comes as the restaurants and the businesses here were getting ready to reopen, at least partially on Wednesday. I can tell you, I was walking down in this area early in the afternoon, Wednesday, I should say yesterday, and the patios were being set up. Everybody was getting ready. And of course, now we don't know how what happened last night, how those events are going to impact the potential uh, reopening of those businesses, if at all, now, of course, the city having to turn its attention 
to, for, to clean up instead. Live in River North, I'm Michelle Gallardo, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Karen, back to you. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Lots of questions ahead. Our Will Jones did catch up with a group of demonstrators in the loop and asked them last night why this type of expression is necessary. They get to walk for crimes that we'll be sitting in there for lipo. I know people that ain't even commit crime, and then they're sitting in their cell for crimes they ain't commit because they were just told they committed them. They've okay. been doing our people wrong. They've been having our people messed up <laughs> for things we ain't do. This is just payback. This is reparation. You can't keep cheating us like we the sheep. The sheep will overrise and take the woods. Why? Are you letting out your emotions in this way? Not saying that you're responsible for this any of the... This the only way they hear us. This is the only way they hear us. They don't hear us when we ask them. We is asking with the Panthers. No other way. We is asking with the protests. Now that we get violent, you see when we match violence with violence, they can't handle it. Well, those in the group say they think the community relations would be better if police officers were assigned to the neighborhoods in which they live. Meanwhile, protesters gathered outside of Mayor Lightfoot's Logan Square home this morning for a wake-up call. You see many of them holding signs calling for police reform, while some banged pots and pans together. Several Chicago police officers were also there, but no major problems or issues were reported. Last night, the mayor quickly denounced the looting and rioting, while Chicago Police Superintendent David Brown is praying raising officers for their work. I have watched as protesters hurled not just words, but projectiles at our police department. Bottles of water, urine, and Lord knows what else. I saw protesters armed with shovels, bats, hammers, and metal pipes. I've marched in a few protests in my day. But neither I nor anyone that I was ever with saw the need to bring weapons in order to lift up our voices and express our First Amendment rights. This has been a challenging moment for uh, all cities throughout the country. Uh, Chicago is not unique, uh, but our officers have conducted themselves in a very professional way. Our city should be proud of their police department. Lightfoot and Police Superintendent Brown have not said if the city will call in the National Guard. Violent protests broke out in communities all across the country. Police have arrested more than 1,600 people in 22 cities. The National Guard has been activated in more than a dozen states. ABC's Karina Mitchell has the latest. Once again, peaceful protests turned violent in several cities across the nation following the death of 46-year-old George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police officers. That city and at least 12 others under mandatory curfew. Minnesota's governor for the first time in 164 years mobilizing the entire National Guard, some 11,000 members. The situation in Minneapolis is no longer in any way about the murder of George Floyd. It is about attacking civil society, instilling fear, and disrupting our great cities. A peaceful demonstration in Philadelphia Saturday afternoon growing violent. A police car set on fire. In Seattle, the words, don't kill us, spelled out by demonstrators. Several dozen protesters arrested here in New York City on Saturday after more than 200 arrests Friday night. The outrage erupting after Derek Chauvin, the white former Minneapolis police officer, was seen pressing his knee into Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes. Chauvin now charged with third-degree murder and aggravated assault. Three other officers involved in the arrest still under investigation. Protest in the nation's capital turning violent. Protesters once again gathering near the White House. Some in Minneapolis see violence as their only option. But we gotta do it the violent way, then that's what we going to do because we're going to get answers one way or another. But city officials were quick to point out some of those arrested are from out of state. Those folks who are agitating and inciting are taking advantage of the pain, of the hurt, of the frustration, of the anger, of the very real and legitimate sadness that so many of our community members feel. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Well, we're following this breaking news story closely, of course, from protests in Chicago and nationwide to the investigation in Minneapolis. Visit abc7chicago.com and download our free apps, our free news apps for updates. We are now going to switch gears and focus on the weather out there. 
dawning of a beautiful new day. Gorgeous crystal blue sky out there. Let's hope uh, it really stays that way. A nice peaceful day. Greg. It looks like it's going to be just an absolutely fantastic day from a weather standpoint. Our temperatures are warming up, albeit slowly, in the mid-50s for most of us. Kind of getting around to where our normal low temperature is this time of year, which is about 53 to 55 degrees. It's 52 in Woodstock, same thing in Waukegan. Lakefront's at 54. Uh, Lakefront's been at 53, 54 all morning long. What we've seen is locations inland have been warming with the sun above the horizon. And since the wind is blowing off of the lake, uh, those have been very slow to start and will be very slow to finish. If I'm being honest, upper 50s, lower 60s lakeside. Meanwhile, if you live away from the lake, you'll be in the upper 60s to around 70 degrees. Overall, everybody's a couple of degrees cooler than you were yesterday afternoon. Lots of sun back on Monday and temperatures will start to warm. We'll also reintroduce the humidity at the beginning of June. I'll show you how muggy it is in the days to come with your full AccuWeather forecast in just a few minutes. Okay, Greg, thank you. Up next, violence across America, the disturbing incident involving police and pro protesters in New York City. Plus a warning about large crowds and COVID-19, the urgent message to protesters this morning. And later protests rage just steps from the White House, how President Trump is responding.